Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Some say the chair of the Clark County Commission is the most powerful position in the state, even more so than the governor. Marilyn Kirkpatrick joins us for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we practiced again and again, and by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Early in the morning or throughout the night, professional truck drivers are on the job, serving you, safely moving freight that's crucial to our economy. From the oldest industries to our newest innovators, from the exotic to the everyday, trucks are everywhere, moving everything. Never afraid to embrace a future that makes Nevada and our nation stronger. Trucking moves America forward. Nevada Newsmaker Studio is located at the headquarters of the Nevada Trucking Association. Motion and purpose are a truck's greatest virtue. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we are always pleased and honored to have with us the chair of the Clark County Commission, Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Thank you so much for always doing this. Thank you for the opportunity. So, um, as we're taping this, um, we're going to see the renaming of the airport to Harry Reid. And I was just curious um, for you to share with us, A, when was the first time that you met Harry Reid? Oh, so I met Harry Reid when I was much younger, but um, I did work with him uh, in the legislature, and I actually spent a little bit of time with him when I was a speaker, and he comes up for the whole day. And, and what do you feel is his legacy for Nevada? I think that um, Senator Reid brought a lot of good things to Nevada uh, across the state, uh, earmarks in particular, um, to help us get different pieces of infrastructure um, early on uh, in the career, in his career in the 90s and the 2000s. And I think really that will be his legacy is all of the things that he did bring home. We're a small state in a big pool and uh, we tend to do okay congressionally and Senator Reid made sure that happened. Uh, you know, what's remarkable to me is just his background coming from uh, such a, a poverty stricken basis in, in Searchlight, Nevada. Um, his father committing suicide by, you know, taking his own life with a gun, um, and yet he rose from poverty to become this legend of the Senate. I mean, it's an unbelievable story. Yeah, and I think that honestly that's what we teach to all kids, right? Um, no matter what your background is, you can do whatever you want as long as you work hard and um, you don't forget where your roots are and you pay it forward. And I think that that's some of the characteristics that Senator Reid has. Um, changing topics here, um, I got a, a text from Rick Vallada um, at the Las Vegas Review Journal yesterday saying, um, there was enough news today uh, to fill all of your shows for the entire <laughs> week. So yep. let's start on this because uh, as chair of the Clark County Commission, you oversee what goes on as far as gaming goes. 
Um, any surprises that MGM sold the Mirage uh, to Hard Rock, and now we're going to see a tower with a giant guitar on it? No, I mean, uh, one of the great things about the Las Vegas trip is we reinvent ourselves every five years. Um, I'm all ab about, you know, many of our casinos are uh, hedge fund backed, and I'm all about getting them back to some um, smaller operators uh, so that we can have a little bit more competition on how we do things. And so I think we're going to see for about the next five years a lot of changes going through on the strip ownership, and, and that's okay too. Um, the, the one thing that, um, well, it, it, it surprised me until I saw the price that was paid, uh, was that Phil Ruffin, owner of Treasure Island, mm -hmm. had had his eye on the Mirage ever since he bought Treasure Island. Right. Uh, but then when I saw the price that was paid, it was like, well, Phil only buys good deals. <laughs> right. But, well, I think that, you know, there's a lot of good deals out there now. There, um, the hotel industry in particular had, were hit very hard during COVID um, across the nation. Uh, across the world, for that matter, in Macau, they would seen it much earlier than we did, and I think that um, there's probably going to be a lot of good deals out there so that people can refocus and restructure um, and reinvent ourselves. I mean, we have a lot of exciting things coming here that people got to be ready to make some cha uh, make some moves to stay competitive. Um, with the pricing of the Mirage, uh, in a note that came out from one of the gaming analysts this morning. Um, they said that uh, um, this could put Win Resorts, they didn't say put them into play, but they said the value of Win Resorts was so great um, that you know, they would have to reevaluate where that property was. Um, Phil Satry, who's the chair of Win Resorts, said to me on this program many years ago about Kirk Kakorian that the reason he had sold the International and then the MGM Resorts and then finally built the current MGM that we have here was that he never fell in love with his assets. Do you think that there is potential for Wynn Resorts after Las Vegas Sands selling their properties, that Wynn Resorts could put their properties up for sale? Um, I, I haven't seen or heard that, and I wouldn't expect that because they really um, have fallen in love, uh, as you would say, with their properties, and they're very hands-on. Um, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't see that would surprise me if that came about. But I mean, even like the Sands and the Venetian, they're going to stay around and they're going to do some great work with mental health. So um, I think that um, any it's anybody's guess at this point. But um, y you know, we just want to keep um, folks moving in the right direction because they do employ a lot of people on our strip. Oh, to say the least. Um, do you see the potential for Las Vegas Sands to reinvest in a new property in Las Vegas? Oh, absolutely. Really? I, I, I wouldn't put any, nothing is a surprise, right? So, you know, a lot of times people just get out of things and they come back five, five years later, four years later and do something different. So. Uh, nothing's ever a surprise when it comes to the Las Vegas Strip. Yeah, Jan Jones said on this program um, when uh, Caesars was taken over by the El Dorado Group, um, and they had put out the word at that point that they were no longer interested in Japan, and she came on the program and said, in the first round, but right. maybe in the second round or third round if there is one, um, that, and I'm paraphrasing, but that Caesars might be interested at that point. So yes, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> um, so. Uh, Circus Circus, 100 acres. Mm -hmm. uh, Phil Ruffin always looks at things as a real estate play, uh, but there is a lot of bare land there. Any, any hints or ideas of what might be going on there down the road? Uh, no, I haven't heard anything. Um, you know, I don't know Mr. Ruffin. Uh, never met him, don't know much about him, but um, you know, land is very valuable today on the Las Vegas Strip. Um, which is more valuable than it's been in the last 10 years. And so I would anticipate some new ventures coming um, across the valley um, that impact the strip. And so we look forward to seeing what the next big thing is. Okay, you have to set up a meeting with Mr. Ruffin. You would absolutely love him. Um, uh, as a Democrat, you are famous for being a solid businesswoman. And, and he is all about business, but he is also a super nice guy, has an open door policy, and I've had the privilege to interview him a couple of times and just to hear him tell stories about how he sold the New Frontier for $1.2 billion after they 
I had offered a billion, and he said, you always turn down the first offer. <laughs> and uh, he made a clear billion dollar profit on that. It was amazing, but you, you would love him. Okay. All um. right, let's, let's <laughs> take a break. We'll be back with Marilyn Kirkpatrick after this. Calamity, it lurks around every corner. Or not, that's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care, for all your small calamities. Modern Boutique Ahern Hotel and Events Center in Las Vegas. Host meetings and events on two floors. Stay in luxurious rooms and suites. Unlimited branding opportunities. Regional Italian cuisine by Chef Mark Segrisi. Flexible event spaces. Full buyout options. Visit ahernhotel.com today. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, season two, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Before the masks, before the distancing, before the world changed, UMC was ready. Our response to COVID-19 began before the crisis did with our own team of infectious disease experts who've spent their careers planning for this moment. With a pandemic response plan, we'd practiced again and again. And by blazing new trails and large-scale testing, including every patient we admit. Always ready. UMC. Calamity. It lurks around every corner. Or not. That's why UMC Quick Care is around every corner with locations around the valley. UMC Quick Care for all your small calamities. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Marilyn Kirkpatrick. She is the chair of the Clark County Commission. Um, so, again, with the news breaking as we're taping this, uh, 2024 Super Bowl. Your thoughts on that coming to Las Vegas? Super excited about it. Uh, this really, the draft is coming next year. Um, this is a goal that we had always um, looked at, and our goal is to do it very well so that maybe we can be on the every five-year uh, circuit when they move around with stadiums. So uh, very excited about it. I won't be at the press conference. Um, unfortunately, I, I have a prior commitment, but this is good for our community. This is good for um, us to kind of showcase the stadium that we built. All right, so I mean, knowing what happens on the Las Vegas Strip, do you see this as a, you know, like an NFR where it's gonna be a 10 day event um, around the Super Bowl? Oh, it'll be much like many of our big events like EDC, um, like the draft, it's more of a 20 day event because you have to day. load in, then you uh, have to load out. So there's always folks that stay before and after and then the whole preparation of getting it ready. So I would think about a 20 day event and, and that would be consistent with, you know, today we're uh, breaking down the rodeo and next week we're setting up for CES. So um, that helps our economy um, for the longer um, time. So we, we like those type of events. There are still naysayers that talk about um, the room tax money, which to me has always been kind of crazy because it's such a tiny amount on a room um, that nobody's even going to notice. Um, and that money was never being directed toward anything else, you know, at that point in time, and it's gone towards the stadium. What do you say to people that, that complain about the public funding side of, of Allegiant? So um, what I would tell you and what I tell my constituents, it is not um, actually public funding because it is room, uh, dollars that are charged on the hotels um, for tourism to go back in to promote tourism. And we've seen already with the Allegiant Stadium, not only do they give so much back to our community across the state, they uh, host every high school football um, team, uh, but it's brought so many more events in um, that we were just missing the boat on. Um, to tie into this, um, just recently the governor of Nevada met with the governor of California and agreed on taking one of the uh, 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 shoulders on I-15 
uh, to make it available for transport, getting people in and out of Las Vegas. What took so long for this really simple idea that cost a pittance spike? I mean, $12 million is still $12 million, but it's a pittance in terms of California's state budget or even Nevada's. Well, well I mean, any time that you deal with roads, you have to work with the federal agencies to get the right-of-way permission to use all of those. That does take tons of time. We've been working on transportation in Clark County for some time. So, you know, we were talking about the potential for a high-speed train. We're talking about the potential for um, more lanes. Uh, so this is just really um, the federal government realizing that we have to interconnect and we have to do it quicker and get through the process a lot faster. So there was federal government involvement in that decision as well. It wasn't just California saying we can make this extra lane. No, you always have to have the BLM. They own tons of land there. You have to work. There's a lot of studies that you have to do anytime that there's highway um, involvement, whether it be I-11. We've been talking about I-11 for 10 years. We're just now seeing it come to fruition. So we talk about today what we're planning for our future. And so there was, there would have had to been some, and I don't want to speak for either governor, but there would have had to been some federal involvement to ensure that we could actually do, use that with. Okay, so, so is Arizona now ready to jump in and do their part in I-11? So um, we've been working for a very long time on the route that makes the most sense. And so I, in Nevada, we've determined what that route is. It'll go along the 95. And I believe that Arizona is waiting for some of their infrastructure dollars to see uh, what is the best being on their return. Um, and as far as infrastructure dollars go, where do you want to see that money spent here in Nevada? Oh, we, um, we've been working on infrastructure dollars. So there's um, dollars in there for uh, some roads, uh, not a lot of roads, but there's uh, money in there for transportation. How do we move our folks every single day? That is very important to us to ensure that they can get down the Maryland Parkway corridor. Um, there is money in there for recycling efforts for water. So those are the infrastructure dollars that we're most um, uh, watching and that we're going to put to good use because that short-term investment is a long-term of fruit for us. I was at Resorts World the other night, and it was interesting on their signage. Um, the Boring Company Tunnel is already on their signage, even though it's not completed yet. Um, so obviously that is going to continue to move along. Are you comfortable with the idea of it spreading across the whole valley? Yes, so we had very um, uh, hard conversations about public safety when it came to the Boring Company. Um, how did this work? So we established a franchise so that there's some expectations on both sides um, because it, at the end of the day, we have to make sure that our tourists and anybody that rides it is protected. So we're very comfortable. The county commission voted 7-0 um, to support that. And as they continue to move their way down, one will be putting good, good paying jobs to work, but two, we'll, we now have a master plan of what we'd like to see. Lots of work coming, lots of work already here, lots of people not going to work. What, what, what can be done to incentivize people to go back to work? Uh, that is an issue across the nation that right. we're seeing. Um, a lot of it is, so we're looking at um, added benefits such as childcare. Childcare is very expensive today, so if you're a mom with th three kids, it's $1,000 a month for childcare and if you're only making $16 an hour, you can't necessarily offset that. So I was on the phone this morning with the state, so we're looking at some child care options where I know that some folks are raising wages. We're looking at some insurance um, offsets for folks. So uh, we're trying everything and anything to get them off of the role, the social service roles, so that we can get them into a good paying job. And many people, you know, they worked years say cleaning a hotel room and they just are tired and don't want to do that so we're working to retrain them uh, we find that a lot of those folks are moving into manufacturing um, it's a little bit easier uh, work and so we're putting all options out there and we're working as a region to uh, define what that looks like all right let's take another break we'll be right back with marilyn kirkpatrick after this timeout. 
Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with the chair of the Clark County Commission. Some say a more important role than the governor in the state of Nevada, uh, Marilyn Kirkpatrick. Um, okay, so I got to ask you about masks um, because I was in some hotels over this past weekend where, and during NFR, where half the patrons were not wearing masks. And I was in other properties where they were so strict, it was unbelievable. I've never seen strictness, not just on masks, but on taking videos and things like that. Where do you come down on this uh, in terms of you know, compliance? So uh, here's what I would tell you. Um, currently, we're under the governor's directive um, that you have to wear a mask. You're seeing a lot of other states going there. We would all love to be out of mask. Um, but as we also know that breakthrough cases, you can still get COVID. It may not be as bad. Uh, but at the end of the day, we are working with the state to reevaluate what our metrics is. Um, so for instance, in Clark County, our hospitalizations are less than 10% are COVID patients. That is a great sign for us. Um, our positivity rate is a little bit high. Um, so I think we're at eight, a little over eight. But at the end of the day, people now are doing the at-home test. People are doing all kinds of rapid tests. And so we're likely seeing more of just the people that are positive uh, for COVID and not necessarily the negative. So we would like to get masks off. We'd like to see kids um, not have to wear them in school. And I anticipate after the first of the year, we'll have a new metric system so um, we can work. And as far as enforcement, we're doing the best we can. Uh, understand that for us, we have tons of events going on right now. And um, no matter where you are, outside you don't have to wear a mask. In a closed space, you're supposed to wear a mask. And so we are doing the best we can to be at all the events to remind people. I was at Cowboy Christmas myself. There was tons of information saying masks are required. There was signage. So in the day, um, it does become a little bit of a risk, a public health risk for our employees trying to enforce that. And so we got to find the delicate balance. Yeah, and I found when we were traveling in California recently um, that in restaurants, it was down to the 18 year old hostess uh, to check your vaccination card and your ID. And I didn't think that was particularly fair. No, and, and it's hard. I mean, we're, people are really getting beat up. And I just ask constituents to, um, in order to help us get out of these mess, just be um, kind to the people that are just trying to do their job and keep their job. 
Uh, exactly, and anybody who's working right now, be kind to them because there's a lot of people who aren't working. Right, so. right. Okay, I got to ask you a couple of questions here. You know they're coming. Um, <laughs> you know, rumors are still out there that potentially you might uh, run for governor. You want to? Here's what I would tell you. I'm not even focused on political anything at this point. I don't even know all the different seats that are up. My focus is really getting us out of the pandemic. Um, we have a lot of social service um, things that we have to do. We have to get people back to work and we have to retrain many people. Um, and I have to find housing and water. Um, and those are really a primary focus right now. And those are, those are for another show because those are obviously two huge topics. Um, there have also been rumors out there that you uh, can squelch if you would care to, uh, that you may end up supporting Joe Lombardo. There's rumors everywhere. So as again, sure I'm is. not uh, going to get into the politics. It is the holidays. And for me, this morning, I've been wrapping 200 gifts for kids in my district that otherwise would have nothing. So as much as you want to talk about politics, it's just not the right time for anybody um, to be focused on it. There's a uh, lot of other issues. And I so appreciate <laughs> you always doing this show. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to see you. All right, thank you. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety, too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours, too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching Nevada Newsmakers. We'll see you next time.